Hello, everybody. This is Kelly Kleiman, and you are listening to the DealershipNews.com podcast, where we spotlight the who's happening in the automotive industry. It's foot soldiers, visionaries, salesmen, GMs, owners, service managers, and industry vendors alike. Our guest today is the managing partner of a company springboarding the concept of direct mail into the digital age using a medium we all use daily. Direct mail has now entered the realm of the text, and leading the revolution is my next guest, Benny Major of Marketing Solutions STL. That's St. Louis for those who are not in the know. Benny, welcome to the Dealership News Podcast. Thank you very much, Kelly. Happy to be here. Thrilled to have you. Well, I, I do like asking each of our guests how they got into the automotive industry. Was it manifest destiny or did the salesman degree you received in college land you into automotive by happenstance? That's a great question. So I've been in the automotive industry for a long time. I actually started my career doing a marketing for a vehicle service contract organization, and I was tasked with uh, creating the messaging and deploying 3 million pieces of direct mail a week. Mm. And after I did that for about five or six years, I uh, moved on as the corporate trainer of AT&T Yellow Pages, which every car dealership in America probably bought a double truck or a two-page spread in the phone book at one time transition the yellow pages in 2010 to the digital world introducing yellowpages.com and training employees and clients on the benefits of digital transferred into the uh, broadcast television space where again every single car dealership has a 30 second or 15 second commercial on tv so Mm -hmm. you know continued to increase my knowledge base and obviously you know have moved on to a full service digital marketing organization you know, specializing in, you know, direct mail, text, video, YouTube marketing, and just really trying to educate the, you know, dealer principals, GMs, and GSMs on how to increase their preference and profitability using marketing and digital marketing. We're going to get into some of that fun YouTube stuff. That's uh, very interesting to me. But first, this is my favorite part of the interview, and I like to ask what your 30-second elevator pitch would sound like if you were trapped on the 20th floor of the Empire State Building with, let's say, the president of Group 1 Automotive. Honestly, I would say, uh, you know, Mr. Dealer, if you allow the customer to engage with your direct mail via text, would more customers engage? And obviously, the answer is yes. And, you know, if I instantly provided you with a real name and phone number of every customer who texts you, would you be able to sell more cars? And the answer is always yes, and the answer is always text him. Would you agree? I agree to, to get you to give my secretary a call and have a quick chat, and let's see if we could bring in that particular program. Yeah, people are going to text. There's no question about it. Now the question is, what's the fine line? You know, how, how you maybe you're reaching out too many times. We're going to get into that in a minute. But your team has developed a program using text that I find really interesting. Without giving it away yet, what led up to the development of this pretty exciting marketing tool? Well, that's a great thing. A, a partner of mine and a you know very, very close friend, uh, Craig Schmidt, uh, has been in the automotive industry for a very long time. You know, owns a, a couple of dealerships, multiple rooftops. And he wanted to figure out a way to not only increase response rate and engagement, but increase his internal database with consumer information or prospect information. So after doing a ton of research and really looking out there, we understood the effectiveness of direct mail. Typically, the response rate is only about 1%, and there's only one way for a consumer to respond or engage with direct mail, and that's through telephone call or you know, using some other sort of pearl or what have you. So we decided to take direct mail and add the texting feature to it for a couple of reasons. One, to increase the response rate and engagement. But number two, individuals are much more likely to respond via text because it's much, much less invasive and they're much more comfortable responding and receiving information through text messaging. Yeah. Explain to us exactly how Textium works. So it's a great question. So what we do is, is on each piece of direct mail that goes out, each piece has an individual pin that is assigned to them with that unique pin code. 
That tin is printed on a piece of direct mail offering the customer important information such as the value of their car, pre-approved details, or a special service discount. And when the customer texts their PIN, their mobile number is collected and added to their profile. And then Textium then responds to the customer with the information they requested, such as their trade value, simultaneously and instantly. And at that time, the dealership is sent a real-time lead into their CRM. Since we automatically collect their mobile number and add it to their profile on the mailing list, every lead is 100% correct and of the highest quality. So the dealer instantly receives that call or text they can contact the customer while they still have the piece of mail in their hand mm -hmm. and to be able to schedule a sales or a service appointment. So it's very, very powerful. The other thing is since the consumer opted in and supplied their mobile number, you are allowed to remarket to the individual via their cell phone for up to 60 or to 90 days, mm -hmm. depending on you know the laws in your state. So very, very, very powerful. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you, what some of the different rules and regulations are and how uh, how it's even possible to abide by all of them. But but that's a probably a pretty lengthy answer. So let's just get into what the redemption rate of an average campaign would be. I know that some good coupon programs might have a redemption rate of up to 15%. Those are the real good ones. I'm just kind of curious as to what the text numbers look like. That's a great question. So obviously the redemption rate is calculated as more, <laughs> yeah. you know, direct mail is always going to have the typical 1% response rate. What we're seeing right now on campaigns for, you know, cold lists, not conquest campaigns or current customers mm -hmm. is we're seeing roughly about a three and a half to 5% response rate on the direct mail. Mm. So if you think about that for a second, I mean, that's, that's leaps and bounds above what your typical response rate is off of a piece of direct mail. So very, very, very powerful. I think that's 300%. Am I right? If it goes from yes. one to three. So that's, that's pretty good. Now you're talking about direct mail. These are texts, but we're calling it direct mail. It's, it, it, it's, it's just a different terminology. No, so the unique PIN is assigned to each piece of direct mail. So if I sent you a piece of direct mail, you would have a PIN on there that would say text, you know, ABC123 to mm -hmm. 12345 oh, okay. right. to receive the value of your 2015 Chevrolet Malibu per se. Oh, interesting. You, that becomes the yeah, subject. So uh, I got you it. Respond okay. respond to okay, that, sure. you get a personalized automated message back that says, Hey Kelly, this is Benny from XYZ Chevy dealership. You know, I appreciate you responding in regards to, you know, finding out the value of your 2015 Malibu. You know, why don't you give me a call or someone will contact you shortly to discuss that. But as always, you know, if you come into the dealership, we can always, you know, provide a, a, a much clearer or more concise answer and probably give you a better value for that. Yeah, no, that's a great that's a great idea. That I, that's sort of how I understood it, but I maybe there's more than a couple ways to skin the cat on that one. But this is this is another big question for me, and it's and I think you're answering it. You know, with almost with, with each question I ask, uh, you're clarifying a little bit more, elucidating as we go. Have customers readily accepted and opted in to receive texts from dealerships? And how often should a dealer reach out via text to stay in good stead with a customer or potential customer as opposed to driving them crazy? Absolutely. And the answer is yes. I mean, the dealer can follow up with the customer the exact same way as any other lead that they receive. A Textium lead does not provide any additional ability to text. It simply allows the dealership to receive a real-time lead into their CRM and also the ability to receive the elusive cell phone number that <laughs> is probably the most valuable of any type of number you know, in this day and age to be able to communicate back and forth. So sure. a lot of value there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I would much prefer to get a text because I will respond to text. I'll look at an email, let it sit forever, because now I know I've got to you know type out a whole long deal and then send it. And now he's got my email and it sometimes it gets into uh, the, the, the trash or a spam mode and I don't get it. But with a text, it's right there for me. And I've opted in, basically. So, I mean, that's, that's a great, 
great uh, channel for communication. So absolutely, let's talk about benefits to the dealer because I know there's a lot of that. So for your average dealer, what does that redemption rate equal in revenue, and what is the usual ROI, and how can you how can you measure the ROI on something like that accurately? That's a great question. And obviously for every dealer, it's different, just like any other lead source. You know, some dealers are real good at handling leads. Some are, you know, subpar or, True. you know, kind of shitty at, to be honest with you. But <laughs> I mean, if a dealer drops 10,000 pieces of mail and gets a 1% response rate, mm. you know, then you're looking at a hundred leads, you know, to set at 50 appointments, you know, 50% mm -hmm. close rate, you're looking at 12 and a half units. If you average $2,500 a unit, you know, or 31.5 in gross, the ROI really depends on what the agency charged for the direct mail. Mm -hmm. But regardless, you know, Texium is going to be included in the price of all the direct mail. It puts the direct mail on steroids. It improves the, the, the likelihood of not only creating a lead, but closing a lead, selling more cars. By all means. It's a direct mail optimizer. We'll come up with some more stuff. Yes, 100%. <laughs> the Lou Ferrigno of direct mail. <laughs> so are you offering this concept to other DM outlets, or is it strictly you know, your secret sauce, so to speak? We're really the Intel chip inside the PC, to be honest. We don't mm -hmm. sell directly to dealers. We solely focus on building, you know, mobile marketing technology and supplying it to agency partners. Okay. Obviously, they can include it in their offerings or on their mail. And, you know, it just really makes everything digitalized, if that makes sense. I like that, actually. That, that I think, is a, a great marketing strategy. And instead of trying to pull it off yourself, there's I'd rather take a small piece of it, of it, of of, of the market than try to take a small piece of a, just try to do it all myself. I always thought like licensing out always made sense. If you have something good, license out and let everybody else do the heavy lifting for you. So this True. is, this is also great, obviously for retaining customers and staying in touch with them on, on every level. How would a dealer use your program as a customer retention strategy? That's a great question, and we receive that a lot. You know, obviously, customer attention is very, very, very huge and very strong, and it, it really allows the dealership to provide the customer with easier access to the info, you know, which obviously equals more engagement, higher engagement, better customer experience, and much better retention. Individuals, you know, drop their guard when they have the ability to text back and forth, you know, with the dealership, and a recent study just came out that showed that 58% of consumers preferred method of communication with a dealership would be through text. Hmm. So, you know, over half of the individuals out there, this is their preferred method of communication. So, you know, since customers and consumers do prefer the path of least resistance, this has allowed, you know, the communication, the engagement and the retention to increase, you know, dramatically. Give the people what they want. Absolutely. That's what I always say. It beats the <laughs> phone it call. Easy on folks. <laughs> People don't want to talk. I mean, for the strangest reason, this particular generation just doesn't want to go face to face, but they've grown up texting and communicating, you know, through their, their cell phones and their, their mobile devices. So just give them what they want. I mean, there's still some of the older folks, older folks like myself, I don't want to call myself an older folk, but you know, we, we can handle the phone call. We can handle a face to face engagement. It's not all that difficult, you know, but it, that's not where it's going quite frankly. So, you know, you're sort of leading the charge here on, 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 on a certain level. Now you provide some other services and I think I you've do. got some stuff that businesses can get really excited about. Let's talk about what you do and with emphasis on, YouTube marketing because I am all ears. Absolutely. So Marketing Solutions STL is a full service digital marketing firm. Then we provide, you know, paid search. We provide obviously direct mail. We do social media marketing and, you know, our YouTube and video marketing is probably one of the things that really differentiates us besides, you know, the Textium product because, YouTube reaches 92% of the U.S. mobile population buying a vehicle in the next six months. 
and it's predicted that video will make up 82% of all internet traffic by 2021. So when we go in and we educate individuals, a lot of the dealership principals, GMs and GSMs just unfortunately have a lack of knowledge mm -hmm. that over 75% of auto shoppers say online video has not only influenced their shopping habits, but 97% of auto shoppers performed an action after watching a video. 40% of them went to the dealership's website, went to the BDP page and searched the dealership's inventory. So when you're talking about YouTube and video marketing, someone is thinking about a vehicle, you know, whether it's a car, truck, or SUV, they probably go to Google, you know, type in car, truck, SUV, or the year, make a model, do a little research, and then go straight over to YouTube to watch a test drive, a review, a walk around, things along those lines. So, you know, being in front of the consumer, giving them that personalized look and feel, allowing them to do that research with the highly engaged customer who can relate to that video in the privacy of their own home when they're most comfortable, that's really what is allowing us to take our messaging to the next level and to push out the information to a consumer that you know they're already looking for to make sure that, you know, your brand is intact that your information is intact, and to be able to give them the video experience that they're really looking for. Well, Benny, let's say that I'm dealer X, and I am interested in driving traffic to my VDP. I've got my Google Analytics all in order. All my goals are set. Hmm. Do you have a set of best practices that would say, all right, we're going to create these kinds of videos, we're going to pop them up on YouTube, create your own channel, provided, of course, they don't have one, or you'll enhance the current existing channel that they might have and use that as your marketing tool. And what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is um, when we do campaigns for ourselves here at Dealership News, we just pretty much throw up some stuff that we think is going to be interesting. We, we'll put interviews up there. We don't soup. We don't really push the YouTube end of it um, all that much. We just basically use it to post so we can put it on our website, and it 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 works. Bottom line. So it's more for us. It's more of a a, a function than it is anything else. But do you have that set of best practices that you could say we have this kind of, we, we set up specific videos with a specific goal in mind and it works and we can show you from, you know, A through Z what to do to get results? Absolutely. And I think I really break it down into, you know, three different silos, if you will. Mm -hmm. Number one is going to be the brand video, you know, to make sure that you're upholding your brand, what you stand for, what you represent the differentiators, things like that when it comes to the actual brand of, you know, the automotive group or the rooftop or the dealership, whatever it may be. Secondly, you are going to have what I call education through entertainment. People go online for two reasons, to be educated or entertained. They really do. So you either need to teach them something or make them laugh. My approach is education through entertainment or I'm going to educate you you know, with a humorous, you know, type of video that's going to be out there. Mm. Thirdly, I'm going to focus and specify the high priority models that are in your market, in your area, or that are the, you know, the highest search volume for individuals looking for those types of vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a review, a walk around, we'll do a test drive on that particular model. Because if you really think about it for a second, consumers are highly influenced by other people that they can relate to. I want to see someone that looks like me, walks like me, talks like me, acts like me inside this vehicle performing the actions and functions that I would perform. I want to see someone take the vehicle on a test drive. I want to see all the features and benefits of either the safety features or the technological features, things like that. Because when consumers are in the research process, of a new vehicle per se, price isn't the highest priority or top of mind. They want to know what's in it for them and you know what this vehicle has to offer, such as your USB ports, your 12 volt power jacks, your you know parking assist, safety features, 
you know, all these other types of things. So when you incorporate what the individual already wants to know and is already looking for into these specified model videos, your engagement rate goes up a lot. And we're really seeing about a 300% increase in traffic to not only the website, but to the specific BDP page that that specific vehicle's video, you know, is about or is listed on. Yeah, VDP is is that's the big one right there. We work with uh, right. you know, we, I've interviewed Len Short at, at Lot Links and uh, and of course Jason over there, and that's their their sole focus. And you know, quite frankly, driving to the VDP, it, it does work. It's I think that's been proven. Now, see, I'm excited. You just got me excited about YouTube. You know, yeah, yeah. share the same philosophy. <laughs> it's, it's an unbelievable platform. It, it really, yeah. really is, and. The unfortunate part about it is a, a lot of folks, they really don't think about YouTube, you know, on the broader scale or the vision. Because if you think about this for a second, mm. video has been around in the car business for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. You know, obviously, you know, television commercials and car dealerships are a match made in heaven. Well, if you think about the consumer behavior and the way that it's shifting into the digital age, I can't go turn the TV back on and look at your commercial that you did, you know, a month ago. I can't try to reference a cable TV ad or a TV commercial and say, oh, what was the specs and the new features on this particular video? So YouTube not only allows you to showcase that, but it's also a library where individuals can go reference your content and reference your material at any time, and it's not going anywhere. So it's a huge benefit and it's really, you know, tenfold for the dealerships to put out their current offers, current specials, current vehicles, and current features and benefits, but also for individuals that may want to reference a vehicle, you know, say last year's model or something like that. All of that content is readily available at their fingertips. You know, we did an interview at one of the auto shows, I believe it was a Los Angeles car show. I jumped in a Honda Passport and there was a fella in there. And he, I guess you could call him a loyal Honda cons- uh, customer because he's had a Honda since 1990. And he started going in to in depth uh, on the, some, of, some of the characteristics of the new Honda Passport that he didn't like and some of the stuff that he did like, but primarily what he didn't like about it. And it got more organic play than anything we ever did. The passport is just selling off off the shelf. It's as it's, it's hot as can possibly be. And if you're a Honda dealer, you're probably doing really well right now, as opposed to perhaps yeah. some other brands. But Honda's like absolutely killing it in the Northeast. But um, but so much for that. Hey, where do you see Marketing Solutions STL in three years? I mean, honestly, my three-year plan is to double in size and really help more dealers design, develop, and execute not only you know their traditional digital marketing strategies, but continue to implement and be on the forefront of new technologies and you know new opportunities that are out there to not only help them increase their engagement, you know their retention strategy, but also to really allow them to separate themselves from the other dealerships that are out there and really change their marketing message. That's a, I'm very passionate about, you know, your symptom solution, call to action, your media mass, your message to just continue to educate and continue to develop partnerships and relationships with not only dealerships, you know, principals, GMs and GSMs, but to, you know, really collaborate with other individuals that are in my space and in other spaces to take dealership marketing to the next level. It's called the Competitive Edge, and that, my friends, is Mr. Benny Major of Marketing Solutions STL St. Louis. Benny, hey, thanks for joining us, man. Absolutely. I really appreciate it, Kelly. Thank you very much for letting me appear on the show, and, you know, always a pleasure. This is Kelly Kleiman, and you are listening to the DealershipNews.com podcast. We're signing off. Have yourself a great day. Talk to you soon.